Everybody back here, you can go back. I'm going to put your back to the sun so you're not looking at Gather around nice and close. So I don't have to yell. We've all showered this morning. We're good to go. Tall people maybe slide to the back. I'll let some of the uh, sort of the shorter folks on the front. You can say it. You can say short. No problem with saying short. Yeah. Introduce you to my better half. This is my wife. Hey. Somebody had to work this week, so she worked on Thursday and Friday while I got to come and play. But she's going to videotape this. So is anybody not supposed to be here? <laughs> That's a good question. Get in the back of the line if you want. You're supposed to be somewhere else. All right. Uh, so anyway, we do this. This, this. this is some pretty cool stuff. I'm going to try to get fast so we get to the games on time and all that good stuff. So. Uh, we did this last year and, and we got positive results. I've done this in a high school coaches convention before and got positive results. And uh, let me tell you a little quickly about me. Who am I? My name is Bob O'Brien. All right. Uh, I just retired from coaching baseball after 30 years. Thank you. Last year, last year was my last year, uh, and I've retired, and and now I get to go and play. All right. The kids, we uh, the kids are out of the house. They're both at college now. My wife has given me permission to go and play softball that I love to do. <laughs> <laughs> and we all did it young, and then we all raised kids, and then we, Here we are. we're fortunate yeah. enough, we're able to play again at this great age of 50 plus. Bobby, hey, take Bob. one second and turn so we can get your face real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The backside's my better side. <laughs> so anyway, uh, as a baseball coach, 23 of those years were junior college as a college baseball coach. The last seven have been travel baseball, high school baseball, uh, all different ages. We do, we've done baseball camps at all the schools that I've been at. We had 175 kids in one uh, summer camp at one time. So that was fun to run that and get to do that. Uh, so I've taught. I've taught everybody from five and six year olds to 70 year olds, <laughs> 75 year olds. Can I move my barrier up a little bit? Anyway, I've taught a, a range of people. I enjoy teaching the game of baseball slash softball. The two sports are kind of related, right? So if I refer to baseball, I'm still talking about what we're doing here. Uh, I have listened to people with PhDs talk. <laughs> Sometimes everything they said is right over your head, all right? I like to take scientific principles and turn them into simple te uh, terminology, all right? It's no fun just to have somebody stand in front of you and speak about something and then they, it's over and you walk away and say, what did, I do? what did he just say? You know, and you didn't learn a thing. So this is pretty cool. We, we've all been throwing a baseball or a softball for a long time, right? And not correctly. Then, but probably not correctly, and we're going to get into that. Last year I didn't get to get into some form, but we're going to do that today. Uh, but what's going to happen here is I'm going to give you a... Are there any physical therapists here? Any doctors? Okay, nice to meet you. And you're close. Uh, this is my way of explaining it, and trust me, I'm, I'm breaking it down so we understand it. Okay? So, uh... Pitched for the University of Miami back in the day, was at the College World Series in Omaha, got to play on TV, all that fun stuff. I was there! Right. <laughs> uh, we had to beat the Texas Longhorns twice to win it that year, and uh, just a great experience. I never would have went to college if it wasn't for baseball. All right, I lost my dad when I was 10 years old in an automobile accident. I lost, my mom remarried, I lost my stepdad at 18 years old of a heart attack and three weeks later my mom died of an aneurysm. So at 18 I had already lost three parents, okay, and I was just a freshman in college. I got lucky, I had a pretty good game uh, in a fall game against the University of Miami. They kind of liked what they saw. They had to come and see me pitch five times before they actually made me an offer. All right, so then I was fortunate enough to go from a junior college to the University of Miami. And back in the 80s, the University of Miami was the place to be. We had a great football program, we had a great baseball program, and uh, it was just good stuff. How could I afford to go to a private institution? 
like the University of Miami with no parents, I couldn't. All right, I was a full Pell, I got full financial aid, I took out a few uh, dollars and loans, but I went and got educated. Okay, I was the first of my family to graduate from college, all right, with a bachelor's degree from the University of Miami. I loved it so much, I went back to get my master's degree at the University of North Florida. That is where, and as all of you know, that, you know, there's the first two years are just English, math, science, all the stuff that some of the stuff we may never use again the rest of our life. It's third and fourth year, not bad, you start getting into your major. But if, when you start working on a master's degree, you really narrow it down and you get to work on stuff that you're passionate about. At the University of North Florida, I got to do two research projects. One was a biomechanical analysis of the swing. I can tell you every joint, every action, every muscle that's used in the swing. Preparation phase, acceleration phase, and the deceleration phase. Okay? I know the science of it, and I know how the body works. The second project I got to do was an anatomical analysis of the throwing shoulder. So that information, along with my years of playing, my years of coaching, gives me maybe the right to stand in front of you great people and give you a little bit of education to take home with you, okay? <laughs> Do you approve? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so what I say with that is I am a self-proclaimed doctor. <laughs> I've been throwing a ball since I was five years old. That gives me 50 years experience throwing the ball. I have an education, a master's degree with related material, and I spent 30 years on the field coaching it, all right? You think I can call myself Dr. O'Brien? Sure. All right. Okay, dog. <laughs> so let's go with this. All right. Uh, I did mess up. I, I, my career ended with a uh, playing basketball when I shouldn't have been playing. Fell down, chipped my medial epicondyle. That's that little bone that sticks out in your elbow. I had an ulnar nerve transplant. Filed down the bone. Found out later that they did the wrong operation on my elbow. I really just had a bone spur. I still can't straighten out my right arm. I have a bone spur that's not allowing my wholeness to go in there. So anyway, it was a mess. But it, it effectively ended my career. I did not throw hard enough to play Major League Baseball. So uh, sooner or later, we all have to hang up our strikes. And I began my coaching career right away. So at 30 years, uh, last year, because I started so young, I was able to get 30 years. All right? So what we're going to talk about today uh, is the throwing shoulder. In the softball world, a lot of these guys want to hit it as far as they can, okay? The youngins that are playing the game. It's all about the home run and the whole nine yards. So when they go into the weight room, they hit the weights hard, and the muscles that they're working are what I call the beach muscles, <laughs> right? They get in there and they work the pectoralis major. Curls right? for the girls. For the girls, that's right. They work the abs, all right? They work the deltoid. They get in there, and of course, this exercise is usually done in the mirror, all right? They shoot, boom, you see them there, all right? Just throwing it around, all right? Popping that thing around, all right? So the softball players, in order to hit it far, they're working the big, the major muscles of the body, all right? For my lesson, and in order to throw a ball, you have to isolate and strengthen the rotator cuff muscle. All right, it's C-U-F-F, -F. it's not rotator cuff. So let's learn that now, it's rotator cuff. The rotator cuff consists of four muscles. The supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the subscapularis, and the teres minor. All right, one of them starts on the front, one of them inserts on the top, and two of them insert on the back, all right? They are very important in order for us to throw a ball, all right? I call those four muscles the kids, all right? They sit deep into the shoulder, and they're a lot weaker than the deltoid. Deltoid is, is affectionately called dad, all right? So for our speech today, we've got dad and his four kids. You with me so far? <coughs> dad is a deltoid. It's a great muscle. There's a uh, inferior, a superior, there's a anterior a superior and a posterior deltoid all right it's that big good looking round muscle in the shoulder all right uh, 
and then the kids are up underneath it directly attached to the head of the humerus and they have a specific role when we throw okay so let me give you the, vi the, the vision of it all right uh a big guy. I need a big stunt. Davey Reed, come, on, come on down. <laughs> this is my one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. He's 70 years old. He still plays the game like a champion, and he's a class act, and he's full of knowledge. So I love you, my man. Thank you for what you do. All right. Now this is not a guy that needs this lesson because he has he gets in the weight room and he does the right things. All right. But there's many people that don't. And sometimes it's not our fault because we just don't know what we're supposed to be doing in the weight room. All right, so here's what happens. We've got the deltoid, all right? And then up underneath, when we are in our correct anatomical position, this is comfortable for us. You with me? Mm -hmm. All right, when we throw a ball, and I know you're left-handed, but let's simulate. When we throw a ball, we have to get our elbow up above our shoulder. When we do that, we're creating an uncomfortable angle all right, in the shoulder. That, the head of that humerus is now getting pushed up. Let me, let's go through the anatomy again real quick. We just did the muscles. Let's talk about the bones. There's three bones that are affectionately into the shoulder. Anybody know what they are? Clavicle, Clavicle which is also called the collarbone. collarbone. All right, that's this one. What else do we have that affects the shoulder? The humerus, which is the arm bone, the upper arm bone, also known as the funny, funny bone. All right, and what other? bone the scapula the scapula that's that you gonna turn around my model needs to turn around the scapula is that triangular shaped bone back here <laughs> up at the top of the scapula there's a there's a chromium there's a there's a couple pieces that kind of look funny they kind of stick up and stick out all right and what they do is they kind of form the ceiling of the shoulder and then what happens is that humerus gets tucked up under that ceiling okay you with me? So here's what's happening. In the shoulder, the deltoid's job is actually to keep the head of the humerus pulled up into that socket. All right? So dad is actually pulling and holding that arm in. And he has a role as well when we throw and decelerate, and I'll show you that in a second. So as dad's pulling up, which is a good thing, if dad is stronger than the kids, here's the kids' role, ready? The kids really come in play when that elbow gets above the shoulder. Mm. When that elbow gets above the shoulder, we have to, the kid's job is to depress the head of the humerus, to pull it down away from the roof, <coughs> okay? The uh, chromium and the, what is it, the scap? Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, the acromium and the coracoid process. The acromion is the other part of the bone. So anyway, when we raise that arm, all right, the kid's job is to depress the head of the humerus. So dad's pulling up, the kids are pulling down. If the kids are weaker than dad, then the head of the humerus is up under that ceiling. And now as Davey does his internal and external rotation and we get that throwing action going on, we get this, all right? We've got bone pulled up against bone. You with me on that? And what happens when you got bone up against bone? It's not good. There's a burst, there's a bursa sac in there. It's supposed to be a cushion. All right, sooner or later that thing's gonna wear out. All right? And then that bursa sac was protecting the top of those kids where they insert. So now if that bursa sac is gone and the kids are getting rubbed up against the acromion process, all right? It'll start to tear. It's like taking rope and rubbing it over a rock. What's, what happens to that rope after a period of tear? It starts to fray. All right. Now, when that rotator starts to get irritated like that, what's it called? It's called tendonitis. Inflammation of the tendon. The tendon gets irritated, and when it when it gets irritated, it swells a little bit. So now we're creating even less space. <coughs> if you keep going through that, let's take some pain pills. I got to play softball today. You keep going. You haven't fixed the problem. You still got rubbing going on, and sooner or later that rotator cuff muscle could tear. Once that happens, we're in a whole lot of trouble. We need surgery. We've got to get that baby fixed. All right. So the moral of my story here is: if dad is stronger than the kids, we're in trouble. So what we have to do as senior softball players is we have to strengthen the kids. Mm -hmm. 
we have to leave dad alone. We don't want to stimulate and strengthen dad if we're going to throw a softball for a living or, a, or for the fun of it. All right? So how do we do that? Those exercises I just showed you, this one, okay? The trapezius and the deltoid do the work. How about the bench press? When we do the bench press, pectoralis major and the deltoid. All right? How about military press? That's all deltoid, okay? So there's a lot of exercises we can do in the weight room. And listen to me, resistance training is good for us. Mm -hmm. Weight room, lifting weights is good for us. You don't have to set any world records like, like, the, like the Reed family. <laughs> all right? You don't have to be a world record holder. But you've got to get in there and do some resistance training. Research says it's good for us. Okay? So when you get in there, I've got to have you doing it right. So let's eliminate the military press from our program, please. That's all deltoid. We do not need the dad any stronger than he already is. You can do bench press, that's fine. So now if you're still bench pressing and you're still doing some other things, dad is getting stronger, all right? That hurts us. We've got to be able to strengthen the kids. How do we strengthen the rotator cuff muscles? Anybody have any idea? Swimming? We have to do light weight and more repetitions. So if I get in the weight room and I grab a 10 pound dumbbell, and start doing some exercises, here's what happens. If I grab a 10 pounder and I try to do this action right here, all right, a little abduction. When I grab the 10, the supraspinatus, the subscapularis says, I got it, I got it, but he can't handle it, he's too weak. So when the kid can't do it, guess who takes over? Dad, all right? Then let's say I wanna do some of these. If I'm using a 10 pounder, all right? The kids say, I got it, dad, I got it. No, 10 pounds is too heavy. So who takes over? Dad. dad. In order to isolate the smaller muscles of the shoulder, we must use lighter weights and do more repetition, okay? I recommend a one pounder, a two pounder, or a three pounder, all right? We use wow. three pounders for our baseball players and those are 19, 20 year olds and mid season, you know. But you may need to start with a one pounder or a two pounder. Got it? And you need to get in there, you need to isolate those kids. And you've got to strengthen the kids. The relationship between the kids and the dads are very important. Okay? You with me on that? All right. The exercises that I always refer to is Dr. Job, J O B E. He had the original set. I do have about 20 copies of some of his exercises with me. I do have a notes sheet for everything I'm talking about today. So come see me in a little while and I'll give you a sheet to take home with you. Okay. All right. Uh, but Dr. Joe, here's the six that I do and they're pretty easy. All right. Stand by real quick. Sorry okay. to interrupt. No hey, in about five minutes, if you need to do the swing makeover class, we can start that in about five minutes. Same thing for the women's workout. Same thing if you sign up for the 945 game. Okay, so okay. thanks. I'll go quick. Appreciate that. All right. So Dr. Job's exercises. This is exercise number one, right? Right here. Just simple. Mm -hmm. Abduction. Adduction. All right. Relax. Don't go above the shoulder. We're actually going right to here and releasing it down. Okay? One, two, or three pounds. You find the weight that's best for you. We've got some strong people here. We've got some people that have probably never done these in their lives. All right. Uh, many reps. You'll feel it. Start with 20 reps. All right. Start with 20 reps at whatever pounds you can. If it doesn't start to feel like work, then you have to increase the reps or the number of sets. Do not increase the weight. Why can't we increase the weight? Because dad will take over and you'll be strengthening dad and not the kids. All right, exercise number two right here. Okay, nice and slow, controlled. Stop at the shoulder and come on down. I do these in the living room while watching TV, midweek, Tuesday night, Thursday night. That's right, Thursday night football, I'm doing my exercises, okay? Very easy to do. That's number two. Uh, number three, we're going to bend over a little bit. We're going to go up and pour it out. We're going to go out at a 45 degree angle, pour the water out. 
You with me? Very good. If you've had an injury, or if you're real weak, you may just do these without any weight in your hand. All right? All right, that's three. Now, the next one, you've got to, some of these, anytime you use free weight, the trick is to get up underneath the weight because the three pounds of resistance is down because of gravity. So sometimes on free weights, you got to get up underneath the weight. So here we go. This is internal rotation. Here we go. All right. I'm internally rotating the arm. You with me? Mm -hmm. And we got to flip to the other side. I'm just doing my throwing arm now. While you're doing it, I recommend you do both. Here's how I cheat and do both sides. Ready? Let me show you what we're doing here for. This is external rotation. Elbow stays on the ribs. Externally rotate. But watch this. Here's how I can do both at the same time. My left arm is internally rotating. My right arm is externally rotating. Impressive. Look at that, huh? Multi -tab. Only skilled professionals don't try that at home. <laughs> and the last one, one of my favorite is one of, this is our decelerator where we actually start with the weight here. I resist it to the ground, pull it back in. This is working the infraspinatus and the terrace minor, which are a couple of our decelerators. All right. You'll start to feel the burn. <laughs> Write down how many you did. I did one set of 20 of each of those to start off with. I got it going pretty good. All right, everybody with me on that? Yeah. Dr. Job, the internet's a wonderful thing. Look him up and you can find your own. There's more out there, all right? The surgical tubes are great, all right? You can do the surgical tubes on your own. I like to do the tubing as a warm up. I keep one in my bag, all right? Here we go, ready? You've seen this exercise before? Okay, how about this one? Yeah, so you can do most of these uh, just like we just did. All right. You can use that instead of the weights maybe? Yes, you could do the tubing instead of the weights. I like the weights, again, for the house. This can stay in my bag. You hook it up to the fence. They're doing some that the other one, hold that for me. No, just that in. So here we go. Ready? You want internal rotation? Here it is. You want external rotation? Here it is. Okay. You with me? So you can do a tubing exercise, uh, a routine. It's just like lifting weights. Don't do it every day of the week. You got it. When we lift, we tear down the muscle. They're okay. Coming. They're coming, Jimmy. We tear it down, and then you have to build it back up. All right. Real quick on the throwing action. All right. How do we throw a softball? I'm going to tell you a couple things. Three parts to this. We teach our, we always start with our kids in what we call the power position. All right, power position. The trick here is that the elbow's above the shoulder. The front arm, we don't want to throw with a dead front arm. We want that front arm up almost like you're seeing what time it is. Pointing your front shoulder and your front elbow at its target. When we throw, we want our elbow above our shoulder. And now when it's time to go, I'm going to rotate and pull down creating backspin on the ball so it will go. You with me? So we've got to get elbow above the shoulder, front side up, use your front side to help bring the back side around and throw that thing. Here's the important part. How do we get to, for the kids, we call that Igor. This is Igor. Power position for the adults, for the kids, we call this Igor. Igor is a big, ugly monster, all right? We get to Igor. How do we get to Igor? This is important, watch me. When we catch it, we must do this, simple action. We're gonna swing it. We're gonna swing to Igor. Everybody see that? Watch. All right, I just fielded it. I'm gonna swing it to Igor. So here's what I taught, everybody with me, ready? Hands together. When you take the ball out of your glove, I want thumbs to the ground. Everybody do it, yep, that's it. Thumbs to the ground and that swings you right up to where you wanna be. Thumbs to the ground. All right, let's all, we're directing the orchestra. Ready, here we go, a little rhythm. All right, directing the band. That's how we get to Igor, or that's how we get to our power position. Stop for a second. This is not the right way to do it, ready? Some of you wanna take the shortcut and you do this. <laughs> this is not how we do it. What happens when we take the thumb to the sky is it lowers our elbow. And now with the elbow, if the elbow's low, we end up pushing the ball. It will not go as fast, it will not go as far if you push the ball. And ex pardon me for this, ladies, but they back in the day they used to call that 
throwing like a girl. All right, they called it throwing like a girl. <laughs> Pardon me for that. All right, but you have to get the elbow above the shoulder in order to throw the ball properly. What does that do for the shoulder? What'd you just learn? That's not anatomically correct, is it? If it was, we'd be walking around all day like this. If this was comfortable, this is not comfortable. This explains why pitchers, after we throw a game, 80, 90 pitches, we need four days off. You ever watch the fast pitch girls softball? Yeah. Those girls are throwing an underhand. They'll throw 100 pitches today and 100 tomorrow. Why? Because this the is the natural action. You with me on that? Uh -huh. Throwing a ball is not anatomically correct. So that's why it's important. If you're going to throw the ball right, you've got to strengthen the muscles of the shoulder, of the rotator cuff. Let me, let me ask some Strengthen the coach. kids. You got to show them one second. Okay. I got to let some people go. You've got to strengthen the kids, all right, and baby dad. So let the kids do the work, all right? Everybody with me on that? Yeah. If you're not playing in the game or going in the swing mic and you want to stick around and ask questions, I'm here. All right? So stick around. If you're in a game, go. Have fun. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Bob. All right. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I was going to ask you about the grip. Find me and stick around. Okay. Well, you got to go. No, I'll stay. If anyone's going to stick around, stick around. We'll talk. I have questions I think answers. you might have my number. Maybe we'll throw a little bit if you need help with it. All right? I'm getting a YouTube channel. If you got to go, go. If not, stay here. We got time. Stop putting stuff like this. We so good? people can look at Noah's look and watch it on a YouTube channel. Okay. How many fingers you have? Keep it out. Very good. Hardball, you know, it's two. And I played a lot of hardball, but that softball. Are we okay? Yeah, I appreciate that. No problem. Hey, Chuck, thanks for your Are you around and we can actually uh, catch with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to demonstrate. Where are we going now? How many swings have you gotten all week? Uh, uh, <laughs> have you worked on your arm all week? No. no. So let's, let's have a little fun with yeah. it. Yeah. Let's stick around. No, 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 not yet. I'll give you time to go get it. I like for you to hear it, see it, and then feel it. Okay. Okay, you with me on that? Yeah. So great question. This is a big ball. This ball is a lot bigger. I think I took all my baseballs out. I did. This ball is a lot bigger than a ba uh, baseball. Right. All right. So, how how many fingers? Well, if you got big old hands, you can throw it with two fingers on top, the thumb underneath, mm -hmm. and the other on the, as guide fingers. My hands aren't that big. I like to throw it with three fingers on top. Mm -hmm. This finger here is kind of important. It's kind of a guide finger, and it keeps the ball from coming off the side of our third finger. Mm -hmm. All right, throwing a sinker is what that would do, and it won't go as far. All right, so I go three fingers. Now, I, I always throw it across the long laces. This is called a four seamer. All right, so when you grab it, try to put the laces right here in that groove, that top groove there. Try to put the laces there. That way we have something to hold on to. So notice here, I got the pinky as my guide finger. The thumb is very important. The thumb pushes the ball into the hand. Grab that for me. Pick that hey, ball. Wait a second. Well, you you actually look in your glove. And try no, and you don't have to look. You, you get good at it. it. Watch this. Ready? Ready? <laughs> Boom. Okay. I got it. Watch. Here it comes. Put it behind my back. Boom. I got it. You get good at it. You practice that. Yes, no, we don't have time to look. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's running out of line. How do you, how do you find it? Exact park exact home run. It, it, look, look, it could be here, or it could be here, or it could be here. Yeah, You'll feel if, the three laces. Here. That's a two-seamer. It won't feel the same. The two-seamer, this one or this one, we call it a two-seamer because as I pull down on that and create backspin, I've got two laces. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. This ball moves a little bit. This ball will move on you. It's not as easy to control. And it's because of the wobbliness. See the laces? See the wobble of the laces? Because the laces go in and out. All right. But when we throw this one and get backspin on it, that's a consistent spin. All right. Easier to catch. Easier to catch, easier to throw, and it stays in the air longer. My, my, my ball will fade down. Well, that's called gravity. There's a thing <laughs> called gravity. That's fine. There's a thing called gravity that's going to, no matter who throws it, sooner or later, it's going to come down. Yeah. All right? So the harder you throw it, the more it stays up. 
But the big thing is getting that nice backspin on it. And how do we get backspin on it, guys? You got to get your elbow up. You've got to pull down on the ball and not push the ball. See the difference? Yeah. This yeah. is a shot put. That ain't going to go anywhere. You've got to get that elbow up and you've got to pull down on it, creating backspin. And that's what keeps the ball in the air longer. Okay? You with me on that? Yeah. All right. What other questions? We got the grip. Any other question I, I on question it? Now, one more thing on the grip. Don't <laughs> squeeze it. Sorry. Don't squeeze it too tight. If you squeeze it too tight, you'll go to fill it and boom. Oh. It'll go straight into the ground. You've got to find that good resistance. What happens if you hold it too loose? And you end up like this. <laughs> and it's behind you. So you, you've got to find that right grip on the ball. All right? And you just experiment with that. How about your step? Stepping? All right. It's always, you're going to step. It's, it's a right left, and we're mostly talking right handers now. All right, I like three steps. I like to do a left, right, left to get a little momentum going. Okay, if anybody wants to play catch with me, slide down there, I'll be happy to throw a few. All right, there you go. Have you mentioned using the pads with your fingers? Yeah, I can, it shows that yeah, you want it here. The laces are there. Yeah. If you put your fingers out there. On the fingers, how much contact do you want to have to go all the way down to? Well, it depends on the size of your hand. Look, you do want to have a little bit of daylight between the back of the thumb and the ball. You don't want to throw a palm ball. That's a great question. You don't want to throw a palm ball. You got to have a little bit of space. But if it's just a fingertip, it'd be not correct either, right? Well, the fingertips are just grabbing lace. Fingertips are grabbing the lace because you got to have something to pull down on it. Okay? If you try to throw it here, it's like throwing a spitball. They throw spitballs in baseball by throwing it on the naked part of the ball and it slips off of the finger. They use a little Vaseline and put it on and it really slips <laughs> off. So you keep and it now that ball comes off with no spin. Right. We want the ball to come off with spin, so we grab the lace, put our fingers above the lace. Again, that line so I have something to pull down. The second joint is on the, on the ball, right? Second joint? Is your back exercise? This is the second joint. That's yes, right. that's definitely touching. Okay. All right. See how it, look at it that way. Okay. The third I joint. I don't want this, yeah. but I do want this. You gotta have a little daylight. All right, so here's what the backspin looks like. If I'm going to throw this and pull down on it, the four seamer has some backspin. All right, see how his didn't spin as fast as mine? That's what I'm saying. If you want it to go farther and straighter, pull down. The faster you pull down on it, and the straighter it goes. Watch, here comes a two seamer. Ready? Watch this one move a little bit because of the energy. I tried to. The laces are a little low. All right? But that two seamer sometimes will run like a slider. The turn will look behind you. A little right to left. So try to find that four seamer. How many steps? Ideally, I like to step, step, step. I like to do a right, left, right. I like to step behind because when I step behind, my left foot with my right foot, it points my front shoulder to my target. Okay. The biggest thing you have to do is point your front shoulder to your target. All right? You don't want to be my front shoulder pointing there and throw it over there. Mm. That ain't good. You're not going to be able to do it. So if I'm facing here and I want to throw it to him, I want to get going. And usually, gang, I'm telling you, if you take your right foot and step behind your left foot, it, it points your front shoulder to target. I could be facing this way. Turn here, left, right, left, and throw. The first one will hop. Well, it's kind of, you don't want to drag your feet. You could trip. So, yeah, it's, it's a nice little, you know, get used to that. Skip step. That, you, you can do that around the field today. I'd like to see. <laughs> now, if you can't cross and you want to go in front, you can, but that shortens your stride. We talked about it in infield the other day. The big thing I don't want you to do is what I call Dorothy. What I don't want you to do is take these little little baby steps and clank your heels together. I knew I had to work on that. That's called a short stride. And sometimes when we short stride ourselves, the body gets ahead of the arm, the arm's late, and we end up throwing it real high. All right? These crossover steps here give me a longer, all right? They give me longer strides where I can get some momentum going. All right? 
and take a nice long strut. The big one is that last one. I can grab it here, and if I don't have time to step with my right foot, I can grab it here, and as long as I go a little bit with my right one, I'll still be able to get enough on it and get it to first base without stepping behind, okay? The reason we get the elbow up, if you start trying to throw from down here, look what the ball does. Hey, first. See how it drops? All right, so you don't want to get into sidearm stuff. It just doesn't travel as good. So at all times, try to get your elbow up and get on top of it. Bobby, it seems like... No, I'm good right now. Okay. Guys, I need some you oxygen. Get done here, make sure you get your water. Okay. Yep. I'm not Thanks. Right Question. Okay, <laughs> yes. It seems like when you watch Major League Baseball, uh -huh. they're not really... They're freaks like of this. nature. Well, that's that's the <laughs> second baseman. Yeah, yeah. The, the second, second ba baseman usually well, sidearm. Yeah. The worst guy you and ever want to watch is Robbie Cano. Yeah, right. Watch Robbie Cano turn a double play. Yeah. He flips, all right, he, like flips, he stands like a, a second. All right, here it comes. He goes like this. Yeah, he flips it. Like There's flips. no effort at all. Well, he's a freak of nature. He's yeah. got a cannon. Yeah. Right. You know, he can throw it without stepping. Yeah. We can't. Okay. We need to get a little momentum going. Don't ever try to emulate those guys because they're they're special. They're different breeds. But you're right. And and the Latin ball player loves to. They love this one. Yeah, yeah. You know that that looks good. They, they'll turn that double play. They'll get it there. It's got a hunt. The first baseman hates them because they're throwing sinkers at him. And poor guy's got a. All right. But they can get it there. But we don't need to do that. Take that extra second. All right, even if the shortstop flips you one real low, take that extra second. Give me that nice arm circle. Swing it up and pull it down. Get to Igor. Get to that power position. The big thing you don't want to do is this. This thing and the push is not good. That was my question. I don't know. For some reason, I always grab that and then a friend of mine said, get it out there, get an air pocket between here, because that air pocket forces you to get that ball out you know yeah because yeah. you know, yeah. if as a pitcher if <laughs> i want to learn a change up <laughs> all right fastballs in baseball because the ball's smaller we can make a little bit this, a fastball is this this is a change up we just tuck it back in the hand now the ball actually takes a quarter turn before it even leaves my fingers right so it's it's going to come out slower it's not going to have the same spin and it's going to travel slower than a fastball would so you don't want to throw a change up from short to first. <laughs> you want to, yes, get your little air pocket, get it out in the fingers just a little bit so you can get it over there nice and quick. Okay? Yes, sir. So from the outfield, doing the throw. Yes, throw sir. Off, Great question. Is that um, less resistance on the arm? Just the momentum? Well, the it's all right? about momentum. The, the crow hop gang was originally, let me show you what he's talking about. The crow hop was originally designed because as an outfielder, you're charging the ball. All right, you're running, you're fielding it. Now all of a sudden you gotta get yourself ready to throw it. Mm. So what a crow hop really did is I'm gonna show you how it looks. This is the old time original kind of crow hop. Now they've they've changed it a little. They've, they've changed the whole darn game of baseball and it, I'm not happy with it. <laughs> anyway, so let me show you what a, crow, what a crow hop does here is because I'm going so fast forward, now I've kind of got to get what the crow hop is, is you come up with the right foot, and on the way down, you turn. Well, because this foot has got to be turned this way towards your target. So if we were just playing catch, I would catch it. I would step here with my right to your target with the left and throw it. Okay? So this action has to take place. You've got to turn that back foot, all right, so you can square your shoulder up and throw it. If you're running full speed and you feel that ground ball, now I gotta get rid of it. Because every step an outfielder takes with the ball, the runner is taking a step as well. So here's what the crow hop looks like, all right? Yeah, can I throw one too? Okay. Yes, please, back out there. <laughs> Also, in that throwing action during the pro hop, should we throw it from our ear or from slightly behind? Great question. Because I know catchers will come from the Well, ear. repeat after me. The ear, everybody, the ear, ear is the enemy. Yeah. 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 The ear is the enemy. The ear is the enemy. Is the enemy. All right. I'll get to that point in a second. All right, here we go. The ball's coming along. It's a ground ball. 
The winning run is on second base, <laughs> and I know he's going to try to score on me. <laughs> so A, as an outfitter, I got to bust my butt to get there. The quicker I can get there, the better off I am. So I'm going full speed, all right? I'm going to pick up the ball, and now I got to throw it. So here it goes. I'm not going to go full speed, but I'm going to try to simulate that. So here it goes. I'm coming. I grab it. Here's what the crow hop looks like. Oh, man. All right? That crow hop actually gathers all my forward energy. As I go up, it kind of slows it down. While I'm in the air, this foot turns. So after the hop, watch how many steps I take. All right? It's just right, left, throw. So here it comes. I field it. It's boom, boom. And I get rid of it. with me? Two steps. Looks like it hurts, don't it? I think it's <laughs> <laughs> But here's what they've done these days. Here's the here's what they do now. They feel it, they just do this. <laughs> they don't do the crow hop anymore. Again, is it because the guy has a cannon and he doesn't need to do that? But you see, you see it occasionally. Yes, there's a few that still do. Off the sure. Yeah, it's better than just trying to stop Correct. and then trying to throw it in. All right. It's something you got to practice, but that's all it is. It's the right leg. After you feel the right leg goes up, it turns in the air, and once it lands, it's a right, left, and a throw. <coughs> all right. That's the crow hop for an outfielder. For an infielder, you just got to get yourself moving to your target. You catch a backhand, get your feet moving. Okay. Just get your feet moving to your target. And again, I just, I, just, I love the, the back step. What if you're going and the first base was not there yet? <laughs> right. yeah, keep going. Yeah. You field it. You get going. He's not keep there. Closer. Just keep going. Yeah. All, right. Just, all right, Joey, you there? <laughs> now you go ahead and throw and then it. Then you hand yeah, <laughs> You're cutting the distance down. you still got your momentum going, and you're still in position. Whenever he's ready, all right, buddy, now I can get rid of it. But that happens. You don't want to throw it if he's not there yet. You want to give him a second to get there and cover. All right, so however it is, if I catch it going this way, I got to get around it, get my feet going, point your front shoulder at your target, and make that throw. Infield today, we're going to talk about throwing the ball. I've seen some bad throws in the yes. and sweeps. And I told you about my best shortstop in the country. I told you about him yeah. yesterday, infielder. Yeah. He's coming today. We made a phone call last night. All right, cool. Yesterday was his birthday, so we couldn't get him here yesterday. But he's going to be here today for the afternoon infield session. So you'll meet Brad Stillwell. And he, he is the best senior shortstop in the country. By far, uh, defensively, he's absolutely incredible. So he's going to share some of his stuff. All right, come on. Any more questions? Well, what did you mean about ear feet? Oh, thank you. I'm getting old. I lose my train of thought. The ear is the enemy. Here's the reason. We do not want to throw from the ear. We don't want the ball near the ear. Because watch this. It becomes a push ball. It becomes a push from here. All right? We don't want to go from the ear. The other thing we don't want near the ear is the elbow. I don't want the elbow near the ear. We do not want to throw straight over the top, gang. This is not good. All right. I just told you the anatomical reason, right? This is the worst position. All right. Now that humerus is up there. It's pushing against the acromion clavicular joint. It, it ain't pretty. Here, this is better, isn't it? I just took that angle of the humerus, lowered it a little bit. I still got my elbow above my shoulder. And now I can do my internal and my external rotation. See, I didn't do that. Ready? This action right here, supraspinatus. I'm going to show you the role of the kids. Ready? Raising the arm, supraspinatus. Watch this. Now from here, we do this. Look what happens here. This is that external rotation. All right? Infraspinatus, teres minor are working on the, internal uh, the external rotation. And then, if you ever see a picture of a person throwing, it looks kind of... It, that, that, that thing's laid way back here. That's the external rotation. The head of that humerus is now laid back. All right. Infraspinatus and teres minor. And now all of a sudden we're going to internally rotate. We're going to go whoo. All right. And 
then that's where that subscapularis comes in. Got it? So just in these, in that simple action of throwing, all four of the kids had a roll. You with me? Right. So you're saying you shouldn't row straight over your head, right? Straight over. If you clear the head a little bit, I'm okay, okay. with getting it up there, but I don't want this. Gotcha. There was a pitching machine back in our day called the Iron Mike. And that lever just kind of went back. <laughs> it grabbed the ball and it went shoop, shoop, shoop. Right? Yeah. I don't want any iron mics out here. <laughs> but now you know why, because anatomically, this is not good. Gotcha. Okay? Here's what it, this is the angle right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is 90 degrees. We want to be about 110 degrees. That's it. And then here's the internal, external rotation. This is throwing a ball right here. Elbow up, internal and external. Got it? You also, get behind you either. Well, it will get behind you. It, I mean, it's behind me here, yeah, but, it's, but it's gonna lead the way. Yeah. The elbow leads and then the hand follows. That's the internal external rotation. Are you also snapping the whip? Exercise mm -hmm. While you're watching TV you doing this? You can you use your surgical elbow. tubing, okay. but you don't have to do it while it's up here. You can do internal mm -hmm. rotation here. But without the tubing? Just external rotation here. here. Oh. Okay. Release point? Okay. Where would be the proper release point? Good question. If I release the ball too soon, right here, it's going to go high. If I release it too low, too late, it's going to go into the ground. All right? The release point should be out in front of your eyes, just below the bill of your hat. Depending on how far you're throwing it, though. If you're throwing it from center field to home, that release point's got to be a little earlier. you got to put a better launch angle on it. Now we're talking, huh? You've got to put a better angle on it so it'll go farther because guess who's fighting against it? Gravity. Mr. Gravity. He's trying to bring it down. Okay? You with me on that? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I'm just throwing it from pitcher to first baseman, from me to Donnie, I don't want to let it go back here. That's going to go over his head. All right? How do we practice that? By playing catch. And when you play catch, where's my man at? Here we go. When you play catch, play <laughs> catch with a purpose. All right, here's my high schoolers. This pisses me off. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I see him playing catch like this, yeah, that girl was cute last oh. night. Yeah, <laughs> technique. Did you see, did you see that sweet. movie last yeah. night? Yeah, right. That makes me mad. Here's what it looks like. If I'm recruiting, go ahead, one second. If I'm recruiting somebody, I watch them play catch. Yeah. Here's what an all star looks like. Ready? The ball comes, he catches it. Ooh. He tries to catch it out in front. He gets his feet moving a little bit, and he throws a nice crisp ball. Moves. There you go. That's what a player looks like right there. Not this guy here. I don't want that guy on my team. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we play catch. Step to the ball, two hands out in front, move your feet, get around it, find those laces. Notice I didn't look into my glove. I found that lace no matter what. Move my feet. We, we play a game. This is one point. If I hit them somewhere in the chest area, that's one point. If I hit them right in the nose, in the face area, it's two points. So now I'm throwing with a purpose, all right? I'm trying to hit him. Let me know if I get a point here. Point. Point and a half. Zero points. <laughs> oh, that's Two. a big point that right there. Yeah, two. All right. Yeah, two. I love, I'm a I like that. competitor. That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> we stopped going bowling because she beats me all the time. Good for you. Good for you. That is true, huh? <laughs> so we don't go anymore. <laughs> I don't like losing. I'm a competitor. <laughs> I, I don't like to play golf unless there's you know, dollars on the line. Not a lot of money, because I'm not any good. But I like to compete. I don't play anything for the fun of it. <laughs> My boys have never beat me in checkers. <laughs> <laughs> they never will, all right? I'm a competitor. You think that makes me a pretty good player? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, probably. All right, that competitiveness and all of it. So I try to turn everything into a game. We did the hat game yesterday, all right? Yeah. Play catch, you can put it into a game, make it fun, all right? and uh, compete a little bit and challenge people. How do we get stronger? A long toss program is good, all right? I highly recommend that you start off playing catch that distance we just did. Are you ready for this one, babe? 
Alright. Yeah, we'll start there. Alright. So to play catch here, I want to try to get it to him on a line. Look at that footwork. Nice job. Alright. And now if I want to work on it a little bit, I'm gonna ask him to back up a little bit. Go ahead, 10, 15 feet. Good. Now I'm still gonna try to get it to him in the air. Alright, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna pull. Oh, that's a little too high. I'm gonna increase my launch angle. I'm gonna throw it just a little bit higher or harder. Whatever it takes. Bringing it down. And that's part of the coolness of throwing. Mm -hmm. You're not. You've got data going on. That brain is processing. All right, I got. Am I throwing into the wind? How high do I need to throw it so it ends up right at his chest? All right. That's all happening as your feet are moving, as you're doing your arm circle. You're taking all of that into account, and you're trying to hit him one point. You're trying to hit him right in the chest. All right. Now if he goes farther, I got to change my angles a little bit. All right, very good. Here we go. I got to, oops, offline. But he can catch that. Don't hurt yourself. Oh, wow. Good job. Very good job. All right, so now it's a little bit of a long call. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, come on in, sir. I once heard Nolan Ryan talking at a uh, coach's convention. And, you know, he was a freak of nature as well. He, many of us are able to watch him play in his heyday. And he was pretty darn good, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. So at the coach, I was like a kid in a candy store. Tom House and Nolan Ryan were speaking together. <laughs> wow. Uh, they were funny together because Tom House was like me, a rocket scientist, and Nolan Ryan was country smart. <laughs> and they were great together. You know, Nolan Ryan says, I throw harder when I lift my leg higher. Put that into your computer and analyze it. <laughs> so Tom House did. He went in and, believe it or not, he figured out. When Nolan Ryan lifted his knee above his leg, he actually pointed his toe to the sky, which released uh, his quadricep a little bit more, and he was able to throw harder. For years, Tom House was teaching everybody to point the toe to the ground. When the toe's pointed to the ground, the quadricep is stretched, and you can't lift your knee as high. Great exchange between the two of them. And Tom House says, as much as I know, I still learn from Nolan Ryan. Yeah. And Nolan, funny, Tom starts talking scientific, and Nolan Ryan says, Tom, biscuits and gravy, sir, biscuits and gravy. <laughs> that was his expression for telling him to Come talk to, to me so I can understand <laughs> you. All right, biscuits and gravy. So they were great. But Nolan Ryan, they asked him, you know, Nolan, what do you do for long toss? And Nolan says, well, I add a little to it. So Nolan catches the ball, and then he drops it. And then he goes down, he squats down, picks it up, gets his feet moving, and throws it. Huh. So every single throw he made during the day, he added a little something to it. And you wonder why he had tree trunk thighs? Yeah. That's where Nolan got his velocity. He had some legs on it. So, yeah. That's biscuits and gravy, huh? We're waiting for some scientific. No, no one says, nope. I drop the ball, I squat down, I pick it up, and then I get my feet. Okay. It worked, right? Back in the day. So, but long toss routine, if you can do that, take some time to get out there and do that. It's, it's just like doing more reps or heavier weight, isn't it? It's just like working out, but now you've extended it. Now when you get to a point... When you get to a point where he's too far, don't be afraid to throw it on one hop. Mm -hmm. Don't be, I, I don't ever want to see, I don't like anybody throwing it uphill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we're talking about angles and how to get it there, I, I never want to see anybody throw a ball home and do this. Whoa. All right, I think it's gonna make it. I think he's <laughs> got it. And we got to wait on it to come down. That's throw it. And usually we've got a cutoff man that we can throw it through and sure. stuff like that. So we never want to throw a ball at a super high angle. So that 45 degrees is probably as high as we're ever going to want to throw it. If it bounces one time, that's fine. Okay. Any other quick questions? You guys have been great. Yeah, thank you. Hold the ball. Oh, I might have missed that. Yes. Three fingers on top. Yeah. Across the laces. Put the laces right here where that first crease is. Yeah. Okay. Thumb pushes it against the fingers, and this pinky becomes a guide finger. All right, that needs to be on the side of the ball so the ball doesn't come off the side of our hand. Hey, Bob, can you just show um, 
get catching a, a, a relay and how you would do that. Okay. Catching a relay. Here we go. Your hands are up, your hands are up, your hands are up. When the ball's on its way, you're going to take a drop step with your left foot. All right, you're going to take a drop step with your left foot, and then you're going to try to catch the ball, and then I'm going to go right, left, and throw. Just like we do on all of them. Step behind, step, and throw. So it looks like this. I got him lined up. Here it comes. I'm anticipating. I drop step, catch it, and I get rid of it. Right, left, throw. Okay. Get an extra we'll do some of that today as well in infield. We can get an extra fast guy moving from playing, playing third. Then you got to be quick. You got to come get him. Okay. If, if you know he's fast, step up and come get it and get rid of it. That's going to look like this. They have the same throw. Well, no, you might need to put something on it. No, I mean, just throw it faster. Get rid of it quicker. The same, the same yeah. steps. Yes, right, left, yes, just be quick and put something on it. There's some runners you know you don't have to throw it as hard as you can. I tell Stillwell all the time, save your bullets, save your bullets. He's throwing it 100 miles an hour every time he throws it, his breath. That guy isn't even out of the batter's box yet. <laughs> you just knocked our first baseman over. Save your bullets. Same thing with outfielders. Save your bullets. If the runner's not running, all right, just get it to your shortstop. Don't throw it all the way home. Save your bullets. All right, our bullets are numbered at this age. Right, Donnie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Save your bullets. Yes. I think most of us were taught that the outfield throw, that the infield and outfield throws are different. You don't go by that anymore. They're different in a way of what we just talked about. The outfield needs to use a crow hop. He needs to stop his forward oh, okay. momentum we, and shift. Okay, the uh, arm oh, angle and stuff. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. Elbow up. Pull down. Elbow above, yeah. slightly above the shoulder. Pull down on it. Yeah, All in, everywhere you are. The infield that I was told was more of a, a lower thing, like this, a quick release. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you don't go <laughs> well, you can, but it's not gonna. That's that's not gonna get there as quick. Okay. If you have a superstar, again, there's some Latins in the in the middle infield in the big leagues. They can they can throw it underhand. They can throw it sidearm. Sure. But the sidearm ball is gonna move that way. The underhand ball is gonna do that. Your first baseman's fighting you over there, hating you. If you can get your elbow up and get on top, and throw it over the top. It's going to go a lot straighter and make it's it going to be higher low, not only two directions. That's right. Now you may miss higher low, and that's all because if you let it go too soon, you let it go too soon, it goes high. You let it go too late, it goes low. Yes. Fielding a bunt. Fielding a bunt. I just experimented. Fielding a bunt. There it is. Once I get it, it's a right, left, and a throw. Yeah. If I go down the first baseline, watch this. Here's the first baseline. Of course, there's no, but you're not referring to a bunt and something. You're talking no, about a I mean, badly hit ball. Hit. Yeah. <laughs> a badly hit ball. There it is. Yeah, I got to run over and get it. I'm near the first baseline. Watch this one. Ready? I'm near the first baseline. Here's what I do. I grab it like this. I go right, left, throw. Why did I do that? I cleared myself. Here we go. Here's the baseline. He's running down that line. He hits a bad ball this way. I come over and I grab it like this. Go back. I take a step back and a step forward. I just gave myself a better angle. If I'd have done this, all right, and now I go to throw it, and he's in the baseline. Now my first baseman's got to catch it around him. If you hit him and he's in the baseline, he's fine. So that's why, yes, we work on that in college. We work. So if you're near the line, I teach my kids to field it with a staggered stance. Step back. Step and throw. It's still only two steps, right? But the trick is to break down before you field it. Any other questions? Uh, you said, like, I don't get the ear thing because when I pick it on here when I throw it. So there's my ear. Well, my two what I don't want is this. I'd rather you be here. Okay. This is going to cut. You're going to be able to rotate yeah. better here than here. This is kind of a push. Okay, I thought you meant like. No, height-wise, no. Uh, I'd like you to be off. above the ear oh, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But I, I just don't want you, this is, I want you at 100 degrees angle here. Okay. You're at 35 degrees. Okay. That's not good. All right. So get the ball away from the ear and get your elbow away from the ear. Okay. You with me on that? Yeah, just, yeah, right out there. Right out there is good. 
and he's slightly above the shoulder. Yes, ma'am. Mr. O'Brien, make it through the rest of the year without getting lit up again. <laughs> She's been hit by pitches. Yeah. <laughs> You saw that, huh? Right back in March. Yeah, it got ugly. pretty ugly with that. Hey, buddy. Hey, well, I'm, a, I'm usually the guinea pig here for the, the bad, uh, bad shoulder guy. Who's so I'm flexible. He's got no deltoids, does he? <laughs> no, not at all. That's what Bob always does. He's like, okay, this is the guy who has your flexible. No biceps, no triceps. <laughs> um, then, then we'll you over the, all right. Me, you, and uh, Paul are going out of here. All right, we got to go. We're going to go do a home run hitting exhibition. If you want to come on.